I've been getting asked a lot lately how I can afford all of my Lolita clothes. And the follow-up question is usually something like, isn't that over the top? Isn't it a little bit much? Um, and uh, to answer the second question as simply as I can, in fact, I only had one pair of denim jeans and they were lost a couple of months ago. <laughs> so, um, and you know, I was already wearing Lolita pretty much every day before that. Um, you know, I have taken breaks uh, over the four years that I've been uh, wearing Lolita fashion. My individual lifestyle also suits Lolita fairly well. Um, I mean, I'll change into something scruffier if I'm going to be, you know, gardening or cleaning or um, putting oil in the car, but not even always. Sometimes I just wear Lolita while I'm doing that stuff too. And a lot of times I'll just toss an apron on and I'm like, oh, whatever, good enough. Um, and you know, my clothes don't really get uh, too, <laughs> they don't get damaged um, at all. Uh, if I am going to be wearing Lolita to do something, you know, like cleaning or whatever, um, I'll put on something that's easily washable. Obviously, I'm not going to wear like a pure white chiffon, like wedding gown type dealio to like dust and like change the oil in my car. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, it's it's also my hobby. It's kind of my passion. To me, it's art. You know, for a dress, particularly for, you know, one of these brand dresses, there was an artist that dedicated their life to becoming an artist who designed the print and then, you know, either the same person or another artist came along and they were like, well, you know, this print would be great in a dress that was cut like this. And it's, um, it's a really beautiful thing. I think it's wearable art and, um... You know, it's it's something that you change every day too. It's like, um, you know, tattoos and piercings and stuff like that. They're all, um, you know, they can be symbolic religiously or whatever, but uh, but they're really self-expression. And I think that in our society, uh, we should be at the point where we're okay with being ourselves, you know, uh, to a degree that's practical. I mean, you know, I'm obviously not going to go bow hunting <laughs> in my Lolita, probably change, um, you know, or even for target practice, but I mean, it, you should be able to be yourself, you know, as long as you're not hurting anyone. And Okay, so <laughs> the next question is, uh, how do you afford your Lolita? And uh, for me, um, it's, I mean, I started being able to afford Lolita because I was working a really good security job and, um, I was working crazy shifts. <laughs> I was working like 20 hours of overtime every week or almost 20 hours. It was like 16 to 18 hours of overtime every week. And, um, I had really cheap rent, <laughs> um, especially for a few months there. I had like the cheapest rent ever but it was like super cheap so I had all of this pocket money suddenly and uh, I had been wanting to get into the fashion for um, several years <laughs> before I actually could even purchase anything and so to suddenly have the freedom to do that you know I'm a little crazy <laughs> um, but I could I could afford it I got everything that I needed to have taken care of taken care of um, and that was what I chose to do with my extra money, you know? You know, for me, I, I wanted to have Lolita clothes, and so that's what I did. I was able to make my dreams come true. I wanted Lolita clothes, you know, since I was 15, and then, uh, when I was 20, you know, one day I was suddenly able to afford it, and nothing could stop me. <laughs> I took care of my responsibilities first, and then, um, and then I got my clothes, you know, as soon as I had everything else taken care of. And it was really important to me to be able to become a part of this fashion that to me is an art. It's not just, you know, clothes. You don't just, you know, kind of toss it on in the morning and then go out your door and not think about it. I mean, to me, I'll, I'll spend, uh, you know, some time looking at it and putting all the pieces together and uh, I, I don't know what else uh, comes close to that. 
okay, um, I bought a lot of my clothes used, so, um, I mean, <laughs> Lolita companies don't usually produce an item, like, forever, like, they make a set amount of them, um, and then, you know, that's it. So, if there's, like, a particular print that you want, um, then you have to get it used, usually. I mean, sometimes people are selling it new, but the store is not going to continue selling it, you know, because it'll be gone. <laughs> At least two-thirds of my closet is either used or I got it from indie brands. Um, I have a couple of things from Bodyline and um, actually a lot more stuff from Taobao, especially shoes. Um, <laughs> to be honest, because the shoes that I got from Taobao are better quality than the brand shoes that I got. Um, but, I mean, it is literally ten times cheaper as well. So, you know, just uh, budgeting for it. Um, I actually have sort of like a specific Lolita savings fund. Um, usually I only buy new clothes and stuff like that uh, either around holidays or like once a year with my tax returns. And um, that's usually the only new money that I'll put towards clothes. Uh, but the rest of it's actually recycled from, um, I mean, from all my previous times when I am capable of putting money towards it. I can usually get, um, you know, at least half of my money back uh, for my clothes by selling them uh, because I take good care of them. And um, I take all of the money and it just sits in my PayPal account uh, until. Um, I've found something else that I want to buy. I hardly ever withdraw that money from PayPal. It's just like Lolita money. <laughs> like, it's my special baby. Uh, there's uh, a lot of really good um, uh, places to get used Lolita clothes now. Uh, Lace Market, which has recently become popular, is a huge blessing. Um, I know some Lolitas were uh, not quite profiting, but, you know, making a little tiny bit of turnover from buying and selling Lolita clothes. And with Lace Market out now, that's a lot harder to do if it's not impossible to do because it's so much easier to, um, to put your clothes up for sale. So it is kind of a buyer's market right now. It's a lot easier to buy used stuff for good prices. And uh, that's goodness. Recently, I've been asking family members for birthday money um, so that I can buy Lolita with that because... Generally speaking, it's kind of all I want to have is just, you know, my clothes. But I think that uh, you guys get the picture. Um, I save my money. Uh, I don't really buy anything else besides Lolita. And, um, yeah, when holidays roll around, uh, when I have extra money, it goes right into Lolita. I buy tea as well, loose leaf tea from Harney and Sons. About it. It's like I could live in a square box with just Lolita clothing and tea and tea utensils to get the tea in my body. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it. Awkward video is awkward. recently, um, my freaking best Lolita friend, Van, was super crazy absurd, and she bought me this bonnet. Do you see this thing? Do you see it? Are you looking at that? That is like, that's like the coolest gift I've ever gotten, I think, before. There was one other gift that I got that was like on the, I just, I, <laughs> wow. <laughs>